in need of help. Story and art and narration by Jeffrey Hunt. Meet Frank, a very old, scared man, haunted by his own thoughts, who remains inside of an old, whispering house. Rain falls continuously, and Frank watches on through a window, determined to hide from whatever evil that lingers outside this evening. Little does he know that the evil he is confronted by is not ruled by walls and windows. I know you're out there. You won't get me, he thinks to himself. Leave me be. I have no business with you, he shouts through a crack in the window. Frank places great confidence in the security of his home. But in the distance, a creature taunts him. Frank, you can't get me in here, he thinks to himself. And soon the idea of any security here is completely lost. What the? How? A voice from behind him shouts, Frank! We know what you did. Do you even remember? I don't know what you're talking about. I did nothing. That's right, Frank. You didn't do anything anything at all. I don't know what you're talking about, but I've had enough. And suddenly, there's a knock at the door. Is there someone there? Please help us. What? What? Visitors? Here? That thing is still upstairs, Frank, he thinks to himself to get rid of these guys quick. He opens the door. Can I help you? He looks upon a very tired and wet middle-aged woman with her young son. Uh, my son and I were in an accident, I think. Uh, we, 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 could, we need assistance. Do you have a, a phone or something? The boy looks upstairs at what appears to be a darkened stairwell with a door closed at the very top. I'm not sure if I can help you. There are things here I can't explain. I can't remember much and I don't know why my head is hurting so. The boy looks on again upstairs. I wonder what's up there. Mommy! He cries after walking into the room. There's, there's a body. The mother rushes to her son. Honey! Honey, it's okay. Frank is completely surprised. What, what's going on in here? Mommy, it's the bad man. I, I'm so scared. Bad man? Frank thinks. Oh, what bad man? What are you talking about? Mommy, don't let the bad man get me. She embraces her son. Let's, let's get you out of here. Mommy will protect you. We're leaving this place. Oh, Frank thinks to himself, they're gone. They were so scared of me. I, I did nothing. As Frank enters the room to see what scared this boy so badly, he comes face to face with a dark reality. That's right. You didn't do anything. A voice from behind him torts. Maybe you should have. Slowly, Frank recalls the horror of his decisions as he looks upon the body that used to be his. I can't remember. So long ago. What did I do? It was stormy outside, and I was so sleepy, I, I struggled to stay awake. 
I saw the lights of an oncoming car too late. And suddenly there's a crash. We catch a glimpse of a small boy and his mother hitting a vehicle at high speed. Frank walks over to investigate the accident. Help us, help us. I was so scared, I, I, I ran away, I, I, I did nothing. Nothing, and we see Frank run away back toward the house. Please help us, the mother cries again from the wreckage of the car. I was so ashamed of the decision I made. The guilt was too great. I couldn't live with myself, so I decided to no longer live at all. We see Frank reach for the side of an old desk and pull out a 38 caliber handgun. He points the gun to his head and pulls the trigger. In the distance, we see the shadowy figures of what used to be a mother and son come back out from the vehicle that used to be theirs, caught in a cycle that never ends, continuously looking for help that may never come. Sometimes the ghosts we create ourselves out of guilt haunt us far worse than the ghosts of those still cursed to walk fear. You are